good afternoon to all of you in last lecture we have started the pulse modulation now we are moving towards our digital modulation system in analog modulation system we are using the carrier signal which is a sinusoidal which can be specified by its amplitude and phase information depending on this one we are in the two modulation scheme first one is amplitude modulation amplitude of carrier signal is going to vary or proportional to message signal m of t in angle modulation phase information or angle of carrier signal is proportional to message signal m of t this specific phase that is psi of t phase deviation instantaneous phase deviation psi of t when it is proportional to your message signal m of t then it is called as phase modulation when the instantaneous frequency deviation derivative of phase deviation that is derivative of psi of t with respect to time when it is proportional to message signal then it is called as frequency modulation now we are moving towards the digital modulation system the base for digital modulation system is we are using the pulses pulse train that is a rectangular pulse with a finite duration as a carrier signal you might be know in amplitude modulation the noise source that is transmitter receiver and channel collectively we have to consider that this noise is awgn additive white gaussian noise this noise is going to add in your system it is having the gaussian shape white that is a uniform power spectral density for all frequencies this is the significance of analog communication in digital communication this noise effect is less as compared to analog communication so we can neglect this noise that is the noise awgn in your digital communication system because we are working with high frequency then second one basically there are two types of noises where we have to co concentrate mainly in digital communication whenever you have seen the word number of bits or specifically digital modulation fix the one noise that is your quantization noise the noise which is created at transmitter point this is the main noise in your digital communication quantization noise definitely this quantization noise it depends on the number of levels and number of bits we are representing here we are doing the sampling sampling frequency it must be greater than or equal to the 2b that is the bandwidth twice the bandwidth of message signal when it is equal to then we can say that this is a naquit trace minimum sampling is equal to naquit rate we are doing the sampling we will get the discrete samples for continuous analog signal now by using the quantization we are doing the approximation midpoint approximation we have to take a step size when signal is below the half then we have to take approximate value lower value when signal is above the half of threshold midpoint then we have to take upper values so this step size half of the step size is nothing but your quantization error which is created at transmitter point which is created at transmitter side at receiver side our job is we have to reconstruct original signal we have to reconstruct original signal from this sample values from this sample values so basically in your digital modulation system we are having the two types of noises first one is your quantization noise and second one is pulse creation the noise which is generated during the creation of pulse same pulses we are going to create suppose at transmitter side we are we are, we are having the pulse at 
This is the actual value, natural value. At quantization point, we are just quantized to our nearest value. This value becomes 0 0.3. This value becomes 0 0.3. And after that one, we are doing a coding on this one. Suppose we have, we use the 8 bits to represent that particular sample value. Now this sample values in 8 bit, they are transmitted over a channel at receiver side. Our job is we have to construct your original sample value. That is g of t at that point. What is the actual value? 0 0.27. But approximately we can construct the value that is 0 0.27. So this is the error which is generated at transmitter side, that is 0 0.3. Actual value is 0 0.27, but this quantization gives the 0 0.3. So 0 0.3 minus 0 0.27, this is the error generated at transmitter side. And we are representing this signal by using 8 bit. That means 8, 8 pulses are required to represent that sample value. So at receiver side, suppose some bit are get error, one is treated as 0. So this is the error at creation point, at receiver point. So mainly quantization error is the main source in your digital modulation system. This is the focus of your digital modulation system. Whenever you are countered with problems with your digital modulation, definitely there is a quantization error. When we are dealing with your analog modulation, in that one, we are having AWGN noise, is the main source of noise. <coughs> now in last lecture, we have start with pulse modulation, we are having original signal G of T, which is an analog signal. First step, we have to do a sampling over this signal. So we are just multiplying this signal with a impulse function, delta function, delta of TS, with magnitude 1 and spacing between them is Ts, that is sampling time. Or this one we will get Fs that is equal to 1 by Ts, this is the sampling frequency. Actually when we, when we multiply this one, we will get G of T dash bar, this indicates sample values. So we can say that this is the impulse strain is nothing but a periodic function, we can represent this impulse strain by using a periodic function that is a C0 plus summation of Cn cos of omega n minus something, whatever. So we can represent this impulse strain by using your Fourier transform. So finally we can see that this is nothing but 1 by Ts in bracket 1 plus plus 2 into summation of <coughs> 2 into cos omega Ts plus 2 into cos 2 omega Ts, plus 2 into cos 3 omega Ts, and so on. So G of T signal, it can be represented as G of T bar, that is equal to 1 by Ts, in bracket G of T, plus 2 into G of T cos omega Ts, plus 2 into G of T cos 2 omega Ts, plus 2 into G of T cos 3 omega Ts, and so on. These are nothing but the all pulses corresponding to your G of T. That means this delta strain with unit amplitude, their height is going to vary as per the sample value from G of T. From G of T. So as we are having the n samples, we will get n sample values for your analog signal G of T. So here our job is we have to reconstruct your signal, means we have to reconstruct G of T at receiver point of view, we have to reconstruct G of T from this samples G of T bar. So we have to here, our job is This is a sample value, sample signal, G of T bar. We have to reconstruct your original signal, G of T. 
यार g of t is nothing but <coughs> continuous sigma this g of t is constructed by using your this g of t signal and this pulse strain when this g of t and this pulse strain they are get multiplied you will get sample values that is g of t bar so at receiver side we have to reconstruct original signal g of t from this one so we have to design some filter low pass filter of bandwidth capital b hertz the signal is going to filter out from the filter which is a low pass filter of the bandwidth capital b hertz our target is we have to construct original signal g of t from sample values g of t bar so here this is your targeted signal we can say that it will gives the output y of t can we reconstruct this signal exactly or can we use the word approximate yeah so here write down signal reconstruction give a heading signal reconstruction in bracket interpolation interpolation <coughs> so in this one we have to reconstruct the original signal g of t from g of t bar this will give us y of t which is approximate value of g of t so our job is we have to design a low pass filter with the bandwidth capital b hertz and it's a magnitude that is a duration ts gain it's a gain of ts this is known as interpolation so here the transfer function for this filter transfer function for this filter ideal filter gain of ts with the function omega by <coughs> 4 pi b it's a inverse fourier transform it is given as pi of ts this is nothing but whose bandwidth is capital b hertz gain is capital t s it can be represented in frequency form that is h of omega is equal to t s into pi of omega divided by 4 pi b its time domain representation h of t is equal to pi of t by t s it is nothing but a rectangular pulse rectangular pulse of width ts and height 1 this is called as gate pulse right down this is called as gate pulse of unit height of unit height center at origin center at origin and width of ts capital t s <coughs> right down each sample each sample in g of t bar 
being an impulse function being an impulse function generates a gate pulse of the height equal to strength of the sample being an impulse function generates a gate pulse of the height equal to strength of the sample second point the case sample the case sample is an impulse is an impulse of strength is an impulse of strength g of k t s bar is of the value g of k t s located at t is equal to small t is equal to k t s can be expressed as <coughs> can be expressed as g of k t s into delta t minus k t s t minus k t s suppose this is your signal g of t original signal it is get multiplied with a impulse strain of amplitude 1 and distance between them is ts so sampling time is ts so we will get the samples various samples so distance between them is ts so this t it can be represented as kts so here we will get g of t k ts <coughs> so when this function is get multiplied with this delta strain we will get the impulses so g of kts that means this is the value at this point kts this is a sample value any random value it is get multiplied with your impulse this impulse is nothing but delta of t minus kts this im impulse is get shifted at this point this is impulse now this function g of t it can be represented as g of k t s which is get multiplied with your impulse g of t minus k t s <clears throat> so at this point at this time k t s we are having the sample value we are having one sample value from g of t at this point we are having one impulse function with height of sample value so this is nothing but this is nothing but g of t bar <coughs> g of t bar such a signal is given to your low pass filter such a signal is given to the low pass filter whose bandwidth is capital b hertz and whose gain is capital ts when we represent this signal in terms of your time domain in terms of your time domain here input signal is presented in time domain g of t is it correct 
here low pass filter we will get it's a time domain representation in time domain representation we will get a rectangular pulse rectangular pulse gate pulse of height 1 width capital T s and which is center at 0 so we are in the multiple pulses here we can see that this is the pulse which is centered at 0 with duration T s and height 1. Now see here, every sample value, we have to consider that this sample value which is present at K T s, it is get multiplied with, it is get multiplied with this gate pulse. So here, this is get multiplied with this gate pulse and this is happen with all sample values k values i got it it is happen with all sample values from this g of t so yeah, for this second sample value here yeah, we have to represent this one as k1 this sample value is nothing but k2 at this point here at input we will get a sample from g of t at time instant g of k2 ts sample value from g of t it is get multiplied with your impulse signal which is get shifted with the value of delta t minus k2s so finally we can say that at this time instant k2s we are having a impulse value with the height of sample value now this signal this particular sample value is get filtered from this low pass filter. Here we have to consider that this low pass filter is the ideal filter with bandwidth capital B hertz and gain of capital T s. So signal is, is in time domain. So we require this. It is a time domain representation. In time domain, this can be represented as a gate pulse of the duration capital T s and height 1 which is centered at 0. Now this sample value is get multiplied with this gate pulse. So we will uh, here, we will get this gate pulse of height equal to sample value or impulse value. Again this is a true for all these cases. <coughs> and so on. Is it clear? This is called as staircase approximation. Write down. This is called as staircase approximation. So here we can see that this signal, continuous signal is nothing but G of T, original signal which is a continuous for all time instant. Then this vertical lines represent sampled signal. <coughs> Are you got it? This vertical lines impulses which are having the height equal to the sample value. These are nothing but sampled signal. And at receiver side, this signal is get filtered out from your ideal low pass filter. The staircase are nothing but reconstructed signal. At transmitter point of view, original signal is present, which is continuous. We have to do the sampling. So at particular point, this is your first sample, second sample, these are the discrete third sample, fourth sample and so on. These are the samples, discrete values. Now this signal is get multiplied with your impulse strain, which is a periodic. So when we are doing multiplication, this impulse strain, every impulse take a height 
equal to the sample value. Now this is called as sample signal g of t bar. This one, g of t bar. Now this signal which is get sample values, it get travel over your communication path at receiver side. Our job is we have to reconstruct this sampled signal. Finally, at ultimate aim, we have to reconstruct your original signal G of t. Original signal G of t. So here we have, we have to design a filter G of t. To reconstruct G of t, we have to design a filter whose ideal response in H of omega with gain capital T S bandwidth capital B. In time domain representation, by using your inverse Fourier transform, we can see that we are having a rectangular pulse which is centered at 0 with duration capital T S and height 1. So every sampled value, every sample value, this one is get multiplied with your gate impulse. Is get multiplied with your gate impulse. So we will get these impulses. So for every sample value, we are having one staircase. That is one step. When we combine all these steps, we will get a staircase approximation. So in this case, which is called as a staircase approximation or zero order approximation, write down. This is called as zero, zero order <coughs> hold filter. This design is for zero order hold filter, <coughs> hold filter. Can you suggest that this is a good approximation? Can we reconstruct exact signal? It depends upon this height. See here, this is the top of your gate pulse. Just assume that this is a gate pulse with a time duration Ts. Here, at this point, your sample signal is present. Is it a better approximation? Or we require some pointed approximation? Our job is to get a better approximation, which is a better than your staircase approximation. In staircase, suppose this is the time duration, your signal sample value is present at anywhere. Mostly we have to consider that the sample value is present at center which is present at center. So this remaining part is nothing but your error, which is a, not a good approximation. So to get a good approximation, we have to minimize the width of gate pulse. Or better way, we can say that we require the some impulse function. We require some impulse function. So in next case, that is the first order, whole filter, we can improve these approximations. Before that one, here y of t will give the approximate signal, y of t gives the approximate signal for any signal that is g of kts. Now the sample value g of kts is get multiplied with gate pulse. This gate pulse is nothing but gate pulse is nothing but rectangular pulse of t by t s t by t s <coughs> and we have to add all these approximations we have to add all these values from g of k t s which are get multiplied with your input that is gate pulse pi of k t s do the summation or this k, we will get y of t. This y of t is nothing but staircase approximation. From the Nyquist sampling rate, <coughs> for Nyquist sampling rate, this T s for Nyquist sampling rate, T s is equal to 1 by to be <coughs> sampling time is equal to 1 by 2b so this filter gives the response h of t 
h of t is equal to pi of t by t s that is equal to pi of to t whose frequency representation is nothing but t s into sync function of omega t s by 2 this rectangular function it is a Fourier representation is nothing but your sync function here T s is nothing but the duration of your impulse rectangular pulse sync of omega T s divided by 2 for this Nyquist rate T s is equal to 1 by 2 b it is nothing but T s into sync of <coughs> omega by 4 b in frequency representation when we consider this h of omega minus 2 pi b 2 pi b with height <coughs> t s here h of t 0 at this point we will get 1 by 2 b minus 1 by 2 b at this point. <coughs> Give a second heading linear interpolation linear interpolation in bracket first order hold filter now here when we consider the gate pulse in frequency representation with the bandwidth capital B and its height is capital T s this is a frequency representation that is h of omega it is a Fourier transform is nothing but we will get a sync function with height 1. So, here this h of t can be represented as 2 b into t s sync of <coughs> 2 pi b t. Is it clear? Now, you see are in first approximation that is in staircase approximation your gate pulse gate pulse of this duration this gate pulse is suppose this is your sample value from your original signal g of t it is gets sampling after sampling it is get multiplied with your impulse signal. So, we will get a impulse value here this indicates that this is your impulse value better way you have to take now this is your impulse value impulse strain with height equal to sample value. Now, this is going to multiply it with your gate pulse of this capital T s duration it is get multiplied yes. After this one this filter here we will get this value. So, we will get a step we will get a step for this gate pulse with height of sample signal and this one capital T s capital T s out of which this will give the sample value. So, we can see that it is not a better approximation it is not a better approximation. So, here when we consider h of omega as a rectangular pulse it is a Fourier transform we will get a sync function at this frequency at this time t is equal to 0 at this time t is equal to 0 <coughs> at this time t is equal to 0 this height is 1 it is as good as impulse function it is as good as impulse function. So, better way in staircase we are multiplying with with this gate pulse 
can we multiply this h of t now this filter is having the response in terms of sync function in terms of sync function so this value this six sync function see here this is the just for your simplicity you have to consider that this one is your filter at input side it is the input the sample value is input to this filter now this filter is get multiplied with this one now here as per this height we will get sync value get change this is happen with all functions so at this point we can see that what are the output y of t here y of t it is get multiplied with your g of k t s this sample value just we have to consider that this is your kp p is represented as a pen kp ts this sample value is get multiplied with this sync function sync function so this sync function function is we have to consider that 2 pi ts into sync of 2 by t <coughs> are you got it this is a true for all these values sample values this is the continuous process so every sample value is get multiplied with this sync function so y of t here we can see that this y of t is nothing but summation over k this is k so every sample value is get multiplied is get multiplied with sync function at that point at that point is it clear so can we reconstruct this diagram can we draw the y of t yes or no so here <coughs> this will gives the y of t output of your filter just assume that this one is continuous signal g of t agree g of t continuous signal analog signal we are having the different sample values this one is sample value at particular instant this will gives the discrete sample values <coughs> it is get multiplied with your impulse functions delta of t minus ts with height 1 so due to the sample values its height becomes change so here we will get impulse function of height which is equal to sample value i got it now this signal is nothing but g of t bar sample signal <coughs> sample signal now this signal is given to your low pass filter here this low pass filter in frequency domain it will gives the rectangular pulse of width of bandwidth capital b and height capital ts <coughs> for this filter it's a time domain representation we will get a sync function we will get a sync function which can be given as 2b into ts into sync of 2 pi bit this is a representation for h of t now this g of t bar is get multiplied with your h of t so at this point <coughs> are you got it this is a sync function multiplied with this value similarly here
this sync, sync function is multiplied with this second value. I got it? Yes or no? Every sync function is get multiplied with sample values. Now our job is we have to recollect all these sample values. <coughs> Just we have to recollect all these values. Or better way, we have to join all these point. Intersection of G of T sample values with H of T, that is the sync function, their intersection point, this one, this one, this one. Now you have to connect this point with the <coughs> with a straight line. Yes, we have to connect all these points with a straight line. So whatever this straight line, it indicates <coughs> this straight line. Here also, <clears throat> this dotted line is nothing but reconstructed this is nothing but reconstructed signal. Here for this reconstruction, we have used which type of approximation? Approximation. So all of you agree with this? In this linear approximation, we will get a better approximation. We can predict original signal G of t better than staircase approximation. <coughs> so here H of t h of t is given as that is equal to 2 b t s into sync of 2 pi b t for sampling rate h of t at sampling rate capital t s is equal to 1 by 2 b <coughs> capital t s is equal to 1 by 2 b so here 2 B T S this quantity for sampling rate 1 by T S sorry this T S is equal to 1 by 2 B this is the sampling rate. So here from this one we will get T B into 2 S is equal to 1. So we can see that this quantity 2 B into T S this H of T is given as 1 into sink of <coughs> 2 by t. So here h of t is equal to 0, write down, h of t is equal to 0 for t is equal to plus minus small n by 2b and h of t is equal to 1 for t is equal to 0. So here we can say that input is g of t and at this point we will get y of t. So response of this filter is nothing but triangular pulse. <coughs> here we have to use the triangular pulse delta of t s so from this one we can reconstruct it, this g of t summation over k g of k t s into h of t minus k t s that is equal to summation over k g of k t s into sink of 2 pi b into t minus t s. 
समेशन और के इनटू सिंक ऑफ So for signal reconstruction, you have to use two approximation. First one is staircase approximation, and second one is your linear approximation. After that one, we have to start with your PCM pulse code modulation. Write down PCM pulse code modulation. 